Good afternoon, Pastor Balaji and other pastors in NLP. I just want to thank God for his faithfulness over my life. So um, I'm a nurse and I work in one of the NHS here in the UK. And um, just after the fasting and prayer in January, I um, randomly did my blood sugar at work. And my blood sugar were very, very high. Um, I couldn't do anything when I saw the result because it was, it was very high. I spoke to my manager. She kept on asking if I was diabetic. Um, I had, they had to call my husband to come and pick me from work daddy because I was down, I was in tears. Um, I went straight to the GP and they did some blood tests and my HbA1c was 100. Now the expected HbA1c is usually around less than 40. Um, for patients that are diabetic, we expect them to have about 50, 60, depending on what the control was. So mine was 100, so that was a lot. I couldn't do anything because I mean I just finished fasting. I was expecting the good news and not that. Um, two weeks after that incident, I um, I started joining the prayers and and started believing God for a miracle. There was this day I was on the train and Pastor Bola just said um, there was this lady in the UK that she got a, a, a news that broke her down. I think that was the exact word he used. He said she got a news that broke her down, that God is healing me and all of that. I kid into it. I kept on praying on the 17th of April to be precise. My GP called me very early in the morning and told me that, oh, they hadn't seen me. They hadn't gotten my test result that they asked me to do. That if my sugar is still on dread, that that's very dangerous for me. That I needed to report to the GP surgery that morning. I didn't want to go for the um, appointment. My husband encouraged me to go. I mean, I've been praying and trusting God for a miracle. So I should go for the, for the blood test. I reluctantly went for the blood test. On, um, on Wednesday, just this Wednesday that has just gone, um, I joined the prayers on the train again and towards the end of the prayers, Pastor Balaji kept on emphasizing that we're going to receive good news that day. Kept on saying we should confess that we'll receive good news, that we should say we'll receive good news. He even asked us to put in our status that we'll receive good news. I was very, I was very hopeful. Like, I just knew that that was it. That's what I needed. I was going to receive good news. And at 8.03 a.m., I got a message from the GP surgery. Now, the message states that my, um, HbA1c has dropped from 100 to 59. She wrote that this is very good and she said I should continue with the current medications. Now, I had, I had not taken any medications for this. She didn't even prescribe any medications to start with because I was supposed to go back for follow-up and all of that, which I didn't go for. So I, had, I was not on any medications and, you know, my sugar level just came down by the grace and by the power of God. I was amazed. I was happy. I was crying called my mom she was happy she said yes that she knows god has done it i was just happy i was ah oh god i was happy i'm still happy because i know that god is going to perfect my healing god has perfected it already i know i know i know and i'm so grateful to god i just want to say thank god i want to thank the pastorates thanks for the prayers thanks for the word of wisdom thanks for the encouragement it goes a long way it goes a long way thank you so much thank you so much grace 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 this is my story thank you Good morning, Pastor Bolaji. Good morning, all the pastors in NLP. Good morning, every member of NLP. I am Falusi Omolara. I am giving and I'm sending in my testimony from Lagos, Nigeria. I want to bless the name of God for what He has done for me for healing. I got the link to my younger sister, and she told me to always join. So I started joining, and I I turned NLP to my own church. I I join the prayers from 6 30 every morning and I share with my people people around me as well and I always have faith in the prophecies in the prayers and I always tell God I was told God that I want to have my testimony as well so that came this month just few months ago I started bleeding I started bleeding I've been seeing traces like my period will come instead of three days to come for one week to come for eight days come for 12 days and all of those things so I was so scared when this one came and it stayed for almost two months and i was like god what is going on what is what is happening i went to the hospital i ran all series of tests and they told me to go for this hormonal imbalance test and all of that so i went back home and i kept praying i kept telling god that god if you can heal me i will come out to testify and i kept you know i kept joining the program until this day pastor 
prophesied that there was this person bleeding and i was like god this is me this is the exact thing that is happening to me the way pastor said it and i keyed into it and i said this big amen and i keyed into it and i prayed and after then to the glory of god till now the bleeding has stopped it stopped in a miraculous way i bless the name of jesus I honor God for giving me my own testimony as well. I don't want to advise every other person that please let us have faith because my faith made me whole. Like I didn't have to go to the hospital. I didn't have to take any medicine. Like I was about to buy some stuff, you know, and start using them. And God said, no, you don't need it. I bless God for this miracle. Like I want the world to know that God is using Pastor Balaji and we keep using Pastor Balaji and the anointing of pastor balaji will never run dry and of all other pastors in nlp in the name of jesus good evening pastor balaji and everyone um i my testimony goes like this so i got married 2020 and my sister-in-law i think after some months my sister-in-law was like i should join next level like it's a very good uh, morning program i should join i was like okay fine let me join i joined and the following year as 2021 may i got pregnant um my husband and i are actually es so when we were dating he actually thought he was AA because the um test result showed that he was AA. so all along he always felt he was AA. well i think few weeks to the wedding it was like let me just check everything to just see everything is fine and lo and behold the result this result came out and it was as and me i'm as but i was like let's get married i just had faith that my own child is not gonna be ss as at 28 weeks i was in ending of october i noticed that my baby wasn't moving i was born usually asked me how's baby kicking and i noticed that Baby had not kicked for a while. I went to the hospital. They they, they checked. Baby was that baby was fine. Was okay. Said baby was okay. Then I think on that Friday, I think I went to one smaller test. And next thing they said, ah, I should go back to the hospital. When I go back to the hospital, they said baby had died. I didn't even know what to do. I I almost it was like as if my world came down. I was so sad. Fast forward to the following year, I um still continued praying in next level prayers i was still praying i did not give up and one day i was at work my husband just called me and said ah, that's pastor b just prophesied and it was for me that it's me that he was talking about that he said a woman that had miscarriage you get pregnant but in my head i was like pastor b always mixes that prophecy and it could be for anybody but i was happy the following months that was um june july yes i was pregnant the glory of god so in that morning my husband and i were listening to next level and pastor benga said there is a couple who are not medically meant to be together but god has done it you will be fine i just said this is this is for me this is for me i'm going to be fine my child will not be ss so 12 weeks we did the tests came out the day was meant to come out they were having issues with their machine and or whatever they were still having issues but the following day came out baby was not ss to the glory of god okay now 28th week i traveled to go and give birth and before i traveled my doctor told me that i should do um a non-stress test when i get there i was like okay no problem after they did a series of tests, and I said, okay, I'm doing the non-stress test. And next thing they told me, ah, they, were, they should go to the main hospital. What happened? They said, the heartbeat of the baby is dropping. Baby's heartbeat is dropping and they're not comfortable with it. I went to the hospital. They already changed my dress. They did the breathing test. And baby scored 6 over 8 instead of 8 over 8. And next thing they started bringing forms saying ah, they're going to inject me with steroids they're going to bring baby out and so put her in incubator all of that and i was like ah the baby is still kicking they say yes baby you can feel baby kick but the baby's outfit is dropping i still kept praying we were all praying the next day um they did a test again the breathing test to the glory of god it was eight over eight and the heartbeat started picking up was picking it did remain to discharge me 
they had to be dropped again. And they now told me that after I would be till I give birth, I have to be coming to the hospital twice. Twice every week. And believe you me, for every of that visit, I always had to chew block or choose chew block or drink something extremely cold. So that when they are doing the um tests to check a heartbeat, maybe she's awake or something, because they needed to get to a particular heartbeat or else they would take the baby out. So every visit was a scare. I was always afraid. I was always scared. I was, I almost lost it. But this God, on the 24th of February, 2023, God did the miraculous. My baby came out with no issue. Everything was fine. I want to give God the glory and honor. It is only God that did this so if you're in my situation just keep praying there's nothing god cannot do god bless you good morning pastor b and the entire nlp crew i'm here to testify of the goodness of god in my family firstly my mom was diagnosed of a bone condition and the doctor said the only option she had was a spine surgery or she bears the pain for the rest of her life and when i heard this news it broke me because a 64 year old woman going for a spine surgery that's a major surgery that's the major surgery so i said i made a very short prayer i said god if you are nlp please heal my mom and four days after i made that prayer my mom woke up without pain so she went for her next appointment with the senior surgeon this time and they were shocked at her improvement even the, the, they were able to play the MRI discs, like the discs, because when the MRI will give you a result in paper form and also in discs, so you can watch it. So when they played it for her, she said she could see that there was something wrong there, but the symptoms they were expecting, she wasn't feeling it again. So the surgeon said that there's no need for a surgery. And secondly, I joined the 21 days prayer and fast, and one of my one of the items of my congratulatory message was for visal approval pastor b and the way god did it eh? he did it in such a way that people would know that this is god pastor b i applied for my visa and my appointment date came out for second of me second of me i went there i did everything submitted my document the usual procedure which was on tuesday last week and to the glory of god pastor b on friday 5th of may I got a mail that it was ready for collection. Even my husband was shocked. He said in his life, he has never seen a visa approval come out within three days. I'm just here to testify because God did not just hasten it. He also gave me an answer of peace. I'm just here to testify of the goodness of God. And I'm going to come back to share more testimonies. And this has actually increased my faith. Because I know if God can actually do this amongst one of my prayer requests, he's still going to do more and he's still going to do the rest of them. So grace, 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 this is my story. Thank you, Pastor P, for teaching us how to pray. God bless you. Grace, 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 this is my story. I want to testify to the goodness of God in my life. Uh, in 2007, I had this skin issue. That defied all medication, all treatment. Nothing worked. Nothing worked. But to the glory of God, uh, on the 19th of April, 2023, on Wednesday, the word came out from NLP that there was a woman with a skin issue and God was covering it up. Uh, and immediately I connected to the word. Well, of course, obviously I'm not a woman, but I claimed it anyway. And to the glory of God, a few days later, I noticed that it was gone. It has disappeared completely. It was like a dream. I said, what? So now, by the grace of God, every word that comes from this altar, I'm going to claim it, I'm going to appropriate it, and I'm going to personalize it. Thank you very much, Pastor Bolaji. Grace, grace, grace. This is my story. Grace, grace, this is my story. Good morning, NLP members and pastors in Pastorology. My name is Amoke. Like that one leper, I've come to say thank you, Jesus. 
I joined LAP through a friend. She keeps sending link every morning and I joined. I think I joined in April last year. Then in May, I've been through many disappointments, Pastor Balaji. I have been through many marital disappointments. <laughs> I don't want to go into episode this morning. But in May, Pastor Balaji was not around. The pastor in charge of the Aja, the man with the hair that was that is full, he called my name. He said, there is a lady that mentioned my name. I said, you've been through many disappointments. There is this proposal coming your way. That man will come. You'll be able to wrap your head. As he was making those words, I was just crying. I was crying. I was crying. I was crying. I said, that is the word for me. He said that word on Wednesday, Pastor B. On Saturday, very early in the morning. Hey, Kabashakata. This man came. There was no delay. Everything was happening fast. <laughs> January 21, 2023, we got married. Legally, we've been married. Traditional right paid. Church, everything done. Pastor B, I have come to say thank you, Jesus. NLP, my last boss stop. Grace, 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 grace. This is my story. Thank you, Jesus. NLP family. My name is Brother Daniel. I actually joined NLP in March 2021 through a friend that introduced me to it. So I joined, I participated in, I participated in all activities up to January 2022. I participated in the 21 days fasting and prayers. They are along the line. I just stopped. I think I got tired. I stopped. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't know what was happening to me. So somewhere along the line, in April, I had this excruciating pain in my lower abdomen on my right hand side. I didn't know what was wrong with me. It affected my thighs, terrible pain. I got to Eva Care and they like diagnosed me. They took me to ultra scan and they said uh, I had nine millimeter kidney stone. I didn't know what that was all about. I was like, kidney, not me, you know? And uh, the doctor said it's critical that I have to do, I have to do surgery to take it out. And the amount of surgery like they said, was going to cost me 1.5 million. <laughs> I was going through terrible times, financial difficulty. I didn't have any money on me, and I didn't know what to do. So I, I discussed with the doctor, and he asked me to go do a CT scan to know the exact place the thing is in order to tell if it's life-threatening or not. So I went to another lab, and they diagnosed, they said, yes, the thing is 9 millimeter, and it's on the right-hand side, and all that. I took, the scan to the, I took the scan to the doctor, and the doctor said, yes, we have to do a surgery. I now realize, ah, I have to go back to NLP because to me, I feel NLP is the final bus stop for me now. Since I couldn't help myself, God has to help me. And through NLP, because I believe in the God of Pastor Balaji. So I joined NLP again in June. That was in June. But that I was diagnosed in April. Then in June, Pastor Biodu gave a word. He gave a word and said, uh, there is someone who has a kidney problem. So he now said, I pray, kidney problem disappear in your life in the name of Jesus. Kidney problem disappear. I keyed into that word in June. And I kept praying, confessing the word, declaring the word. Even that morning after the prayer, during the day, I kept declaring, declaring like, I refuse to have the uh, kidney problem. Kidney problem disappear, dissolved in the name of Jesus. So within 24 hours, then I went to the toilet. When I went to the toilet, I pee. Oh my goodness. It was like a my, mighty gushing flow. My system just opened and peed heavily, and it was white substance. I was like, oh my God, it looks like I have peed out the stone because I felt it. Then I didn't feel any pain as usual. So I went to do a CT scan again, a CT scan to reassure my healing. Then I took the scan to the doctor. The result of the scan said I did no kidney stone in me. So I gave it to the doctor, and the doctor was confused and started arguing with me that it's not possible for nine millimeter stone to be peed out and I said, well, I believe in God. This is the handwork of God. So you should believe. He said, no, I do believe. Don't get me wrong, but it's impossible to pin nine millimeter. Then I just started laughing. So now I've come to give God all, all the glory, all the praise, all the thanks. Uh, I want to encourage everybody, stick to NLP prayer. Now I'm very consistent with or with no problem in me. I don't have any problem, but I'm still consistent. NLP is not a place to go only when you have a problem. Stick to the prayer. Keep praying and dedicate yourself to God. Thank you, NLP family. I give God all the praise. 
Grace, 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 uh, this is my story. Um, I've had this serious back pain for years now, and um, my dad had it. I remember as a kid, I used to, you know, help my dad massage or press his back. Um, and even well into my teens, I used to help my dad massage his back. And so I'd always just assume that, you know, I mean, when mine started, I figured, okay, this was going to be it for the rest of my life. I'll have back pains, you know, just like my dad. And um, I mine got worse because I, I played football and I um, I fell backwards into a pole, you know, about the same region as well. So it got extremely worse. In fact, I would literally beg anyone. I mean, I was always going for massages and I would literally beg anyone around me to just stand on my back when the pain comes like that. You know, I just said, please, just stand on my back. It, no matter how heavy you are, just stand on my back. You know, that, that was my story, you know. Um, on the 10th of May, during the next level prayers, I actually joined uh, uh, on the first of May. I joined. I joined this May. Uh, during the next level prayers, uh, Pastor Balaji was talking. He was praying on healing, and then he said, "There's a you know," uh, and he, prayed, he mentioned back pain. Uh, you know, he had said we should put our hands where you know we had pains, and so I put my hand. You know, my right hand was on my back, or you know, my lower back, and then he mentioned back pain, and you know, I I just believed I had received the healing, and I just let it go. It was later on it occurred to me that like, wait i can't feel the pain anymore uh, by the next morning which was 11 i mean i couldn't i mean i was done like there's no till now there's no pain no i mean uh, this is someone who i would have by today by this time someone would have been maybe someone would have been standing on my back already or at least two people would have stood you know on my back you know but no pain whatsoever i can bend down i can stand up i can jump i can run i'm extremely grateful uh, I want to thank the Lord. This this is amazing. This is an instant testimony, instant healing. I thank God for this grace and um, I thank God for uh, Pastor Balaji. Thank you so much. Good morning, Pastor B. Good morning, Harvestas Pastors. Good morning, NLP family. Great, great, great. This is my story now and forever. Amen. For the past four years, I have been having this pain in my rectal region I, I started noticing it back in 2018 and at some point I thought it was hemorrhoids then I got some drinks some drugs some ointments that I stay using on it in 2021 I was so dependent on those ointments up to the point that I can't leave my house I can't go anywhere I know that I'm not I won't be at home. I can't dare to leave the house without that ointment because of the pain I would feel when I defecate. I was scared to use the restroom. Whenever I think about the pain, I'm always scared to use the bat the bathroom because of the aftermath pain, because of the discomfort that I feel. So during the Aja conference in September, when Pastor B, B prayed for healings and asked us to go check and do what we couldn't do before though so i i wasn't pressed so i just went to the restroom that day and i just told myself that you have gotten your healing that god has healed you and your healing is permanent so the devil wanted to confuse me that day i was like am i sure that i am not pressed so how do you know that you have gotten your healing but i said that voice in my head i told him that i have gotten my healing god has healed me and it is permanent since september up until this moment this is first of may 2023 i haven't had the need to use that ointment i now use the restroom with ease with no pain i was like this was what she missed for the past four years <laughs> i'm so grateful to god i want to thank pastor b i want to thank all the harvesters pastors for being there for us great 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 this is my story now and forever amen somebody shout grace shout grace shout grace say this is my story